okay, well, I realized I, I just today uh, changed my uh, screen recording settings, and I realized that the audio is just slightly off uh, in my videos. Uh, the audio is actually slightly delayed by one second or so, maybe not even that. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to, right now, I'm looking at the last video. So if you watch video number two, this is me editing it right here. Um, and if I press play here, right here, and you can't really see in the preview here because it's so small, but when I'm editing videos, uh, again, I, as I mentioned in the first video, I double click this and it's now being displayed on my full screen on my second monitor. So if you're doing video editing, a second monitor is great. <laughs> so now I can see everything very clear. So it's easier for me to see um, where the audio is off a little bit. So I'm watching the video clip here. See, right now I can see myself typing. Now I hear myself typing. So yeah, it's a little bit off. So what I can do here is I have this video uh, clip here and the audio is built in. Well, let's say you want the audio separate for whatever reason. Maybe you want to use that audio for a different clip or you have a problem like this where you need to adjust it because it didn't record properly. I'm going to right click this and you can say split audio. And now the audio from that video is split into a separate clip and put on an audio track here but they're still connected together. See, they're, they're still connected together because they're still grouped. And the other video I showed you how to group videos. Well, if I select this video here, clip here, I can right click and I can go to ungroup clips. Now I can take the um, video and the audio and move them separately. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to zoom in. And like I said, I think the audio is just a little late. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my video here a little off and then I'm going to watch this clip. And again, you can't see it because it's on my second screen because I need to watch it full screen because I need to be able to see when I start typing here. I actually timed that up very well. What I can do now is I can move this clip back over and trim the audio up this way, choose them both again, and group them. Now they're moving together again, and I don't have to worry about them getting out of sync, but let me jump to another part of the video. Let me uh, actually zoom in here. Oh, I didn't line them up properly here. I'm gonna say ungroup, click the, video, the audio here, and then group them again. And then I'm going to move my little outro here. So that's how you can split audio. So the first thing I did was right click and I click split audio, which is already split so it's grayed out now, but they're still grouped together. So if you want to move them independently, you have to say ungroup. And at that point you can delete the audio or delete the video and leave the other or just move them around separately. Uh, let me just check, you know, another part of that video, see if I can figure out Yep, so that was me talking in the video. I don't know if it's confusing for you listening to me talk in that video, but I thought it'd be a good example since you hopefully already watched this video. I now have those lined up fairly well. And um, yeah, I just, I like I said, I just changed how I'm recording my audio before I was using uh, a different, uh, I'm not gonna get into it, but I'm using Pulse Audio now where before I was using Jack D on top of Pulse Audio. So it's a little different, not that things were perfect before. Anyway, now that I have the clips how I liked it, we talked about here going to render and you have your render options. Now, here we have an option that says full project or selected zone. What does selected zone mean? Well, I mentioned in the first video, this little blue line here. So let's say I wanted to just see how this, this dissolve here renders out. I can choose, I can move this blue line, I can make it bigger or smaller and you know however much I want to render out and then when I go to render I can say selection zone and when I click render it's only going to render what's inside that blue line 
full project, of course, will be your full project. And always make sure, sometimes you'll have a lot of clips and you'll have like a clip out here and you won't realize it and you'll go to render it and then you'll get, you know, 40 minutes of black stuff and then a little video clip. So make sure you remove any extra clips. You can know by clicking this uh, zoom to fit project. Uh, so that way you, you'll see the whole project and you'll realize that you forgot to delete some clips. Uh, also under the render options here, again, if you go to um, more options, uh, you can have encoder speed threads. You can turn this up and it uses more threads on your processor. Uh, don't set it too high because your machine will run real slow. I think default is two. That's a good number, but if you're, you're going to dedicate your machine to just rendering this video, you can turn that number up. Or if you have uh, uh, you know, a lot of processors in your machine, a lot of cores, you can turn that up. Um, export or you know so by default you have your project size if for some reason you want to render out like a real quick version of it you can always rescale it down in size uh, for for testing uh, audio is on automatically uh, an overlay so this will just add a little uh, counter down in the bottom of your screen telling you how many seconds minutes and hours you are or frames so if, if for some reason you want that you can put that there Play after rendering will automatically play it when it's done rendering. And export metadata I have actually not played with. Anyway, uh, and then scanning when it comes to uh, interlaced video, just leave that audio. If you're, I haven't really messed with that at all. Back in the day when I was converting non-digital video to digital sometimes you would have scan line problems and then you need to start work you know change whether you're interlacing or not and that was kind of a headache back in the day it's not really an issue nowadays if you're working with digital video so let's just assume you're working with digital video now another fun thing so we can say uh, render this out and it will render out you can and again I can choose this and I can say render and it will start rendering uh, oh, no, this is video two. It was telling me that that file already exists because I forgot to rename it. Now I'm going to say render and it will start rendering. And again, I can keep working on this project. It just finished rendering the first video while I was recording this one. Um, and again, it has a lot of presets here, but generate script. So here, what it will do, and this is really neat with Caden Live. And let me go ahead and open this up and I'm going to go to just to my temp directory temp I'm going to create a new folder I'll just call it KL for Caden Live this is just for an example so now I can call this video 2 I'll say open and really I should call it video 2.sh I don't know if it will append that okay yes and what that's going to do should have put that there. Let's do generate script again and just let it generate inside that folder there. Yes, there we go. Maybe it has to go inside the, 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 the folder when it creates it. So it was warning me that the file that this script will create already exists because we're rendering it out now. But what that did is if I open up my file browser here and I go to that folder, which is right here generate script so hope I'm not losing you so it's going to be in your home directory is the default where uh, there's a Caden Live folder that uh, Caden Live creates and that's the default where it saves everything and then within that there's a scripts folder so here we just generated two files we generated a shell script file and an M MLT file and if I was to look at the both of these so let me open up the shell script file. You can see that it tells, it sets a variable for where your renderer is. MLT is the back end. I've done videos in MLT before or Melt. Melt uses MLT. And it tells you where all your files are and your parameters for what you're rendering out. Why am I showing you this? Most likely you're not going to use this <laughs> unless you're uh, super geeky like me. Um, Let's go ahead and also look at this file, which is 
This is an XML file with all the settings on where your clips are and everything. So basically, you can generate this and then later on, you can run these scripts and it will render the video for you from the shell, which is really great if you want to automate a lot of editing. Let's say you kind of make a template and you want and you have, you can point it at a directory and uh, basically, again, I'm probably getting off track here. A lot of you probably don't care about this, but it's really, really cool because I can basically, again, make a template and just write a script that can automatically generate a hundred different videos based on that same template rather than opening up the GUI and loading all that up each time. Anyway, just wanted to point that out. So rendering options, again, you have lots of rendering options. Depending on what version of Caden Live you're running, this may look a little bit different and your default options might be different. You might need to install certain libraries to render to certain stuff because certain formats are proprietary and your system may not have them installed by default. Um, but that's just different libraries you have to get installed, uh, which all should be in the repositories for most distributions. Um, but yeah, you have your, your lossless down here, your high quality ones. If you just want to render the audio out, uh, if you want to render to a sequence. So if you want to, to just have a bunch of still images of every frame, you have different options here for presets. Um, if you're going to do an older style, uh, you know, it says old TV here. So low definition, um, so DVDs and that sort of stuff, ultra high definition 4k, you can render out to WebM or MP4 here. And then there's the generic, uh, MP4, M2. And then again, again, you can, you know, tweak all the settings for those down here. So like if I was to choose this flash one, it shows me the quality settings out here. Basically it's it, your settings are going to be, um, you know, your frame size, your uh, quality and your for video and quality for audio. Anyway, I feel like uh, like I probably got off track because a lot of you probably don't care about the script thing. I just think that's one of the coolest things about uh, Caden Live is that it, you can generate scripts to render the videos at later time for bulk renderings. So yeah, that is it. And again, I can, I close the rendering window, but I can open up the rendering window and go to, or open up the rendering window and go to queued jobs and see what's being rendered right there. And um, so let's say, just as an example, let's put this, yeah, let's say I wanted to render out this, we'll just call it a, I can say render file and it's going to see it says waiting here. So it's rendering out this file. When this one's done, it will start on this one. But if I wanted to start both of them rendering at the same time, I can choose this one and click start job and it will start, it will continue to render this one and start rendering this one at the same time. Be careful doing that. Depending on the speed of your computer, you might end up locking things up if you over tax your processor. Um, you're usually better off just letting them render one at a time. You're not really going to save yourself time because usually if you get a bunch of them going at once, they're all going to go slower. So you're better off letting them finish before you start another one. And then like, let's say I click render on this one and I decide I don't want to render that one. I can say remove that job and renderings that are finished are still up here with check marks. This one's been rendered. Uh, what you can do is you can also say clean up and or remove anything except for stuff that is rendering or is about to be rendered. Um, and theoretically, I guess you can get shut down your computer after rendering, but you probably need to give it uh, permissions to do that. And that's outside of this application. I've never done that. And my computer runs 24 seven anyway. But if you had like a three hour render that you needed to do and you don't want your computer running, it was done. Theoretically, you can give Caden Live group permissions to shut down when it's done, but that's a that's a system thing, not a Caden Live thing. As far as the permissions, you would need to add it to a group that has permissions to do the shutdown. And that is it for this video. I thank you for watching. As always, uh, please visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There should be a link in the description to that. There you can search through all my videos. Also, a link to my RSS feed there. Also, check out the other links in the description, such as my Patreon website, patreon.com forward slash melx1000. If you want to become a supporter because you like my videos, a little bit of a, a little bit as $1 a month 
uh, is much appreciated. Uh, more is even more appreciated. But uh, I thank you for watching. Please be sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.